meeting Hawke's Bay Regional Council for 2014 um, and good to see you all here looking fit and well and full of kaimoana and everything else. So welcome councillors, um, staff and members of the public, the press. Um, as you may be aware we don't normally have a meeting in January. Uh, generally it's a council free, council meeting free month. Uh, we may have a committee meeting but um, this is not a normal year. There are sleeves to be rolled up and a lot of work to be done. Could I ask Councillor Bevan to take us through the prayer, please? And as I welcome councillors, it goes without saying, I welcome Mr Mohi, the Chair of the uh, Māori Committee, who get a special mention. Um, any apologies for the meeting today? Everyone's uh, here, thank you. Notices for today. Um, I have a couple here, which I'll start now. Um, I have... There's been a lot of interest in media, interest in comments made by the Mayor of Central Hawke's Bay in, in recent days. Um, I'd just like to take an opportunity to, you know, for the record state that the Hawke's Bay Regional Council uh, does not agree with his sentiments and um, we see a lot of value in our relationship and our ongoing relationship with uh, Chairman Nahiwi Tamona and Nari Kahanunu Iwi Incorporated um, and an opportunity to build on um, recent uh, memorandums, kaitiaki uh, committees that have been formed to provide a, an overview for hapu and iwi on the Tukitok catchment in, in relation to um, the Rotanifa water storage scheme should it, it go ahead and obviously plan change six. The comments are unfortunate. Obviously if the Rotanifa water storage scheme does go ahead there will be many jobs and uh, we hope to see a resurgence of um, local population. We hope to see um, opportunities for all people of Hawke's Bay to, to get employment. And obviously the comments of Mayor Butler do not fit with that, uh, that premise and obviously are not, um, you know, not part of the thinking at Hawke's Bay Regional Council. So I just want to be clear on that as we go forward. Right. Um, I had another small notice in regard to agendas and I'll get Leanne to, to talk us through a couple of things here but just to clear up any confusion around delegations to council and or um, late agenda items to council we have a quite a, a robust um, set of uh, standing orders and uh, dare I say it local government regulation and rules etc that we have to follow in preparing our meetings and notifying the public of what's happening and um, you know the process does need to be followed so unfortunately um, there was a request a very late request from uh, Nikki to meet with the council today I've had to decline that reluctantly um, but I am still in dialogue with um, its chairman uh, Hiwi Tamona uh, to see if we could meet at, at their earliest convenience as well as ours uh, they have a board meeting um, today and tomorrow at Tautani Station though, so um, that's probably not going to work, but I'll just let in councillors know and uh, any other interested parties that we are still trying to get together uh, to discuss some um, issues ongoing. So just if we could just have some clarity around um, Leanne on how we, how we have to deal with this stuff. Certainly delegations is one one item, but there was a request for some additional items uh, to this meeting today. And just so we're clear in the future, um, it would be quite useful to know sort of time frames and, and those sorts of things to get to get um, even notice as a motion, as an example. So could I hand that over to you, please? Right, through you Mr Chair. Um, the first one being delegations which are um, 
when a group outside of council or not a, a, a sitting member wants to make a presentation to council and that comes under standing orders um, number 3.19. Uh, where it outlines that a request needs to be in writing, it needs to go to the chief executive at least five working days in advance of the meeting at which they want to speak, um, and then the chief executive confers with the chairman, who is the one that actually ultimately accepts or denies the request to speak, and can defer to a different meeting if that committee normally deals with the issues that are wanting to be discussed. Um, in regard to agendas and late items for agendas, the late items can be accepted onto the agenda, but there has to be a valid reason, understanding orders, why it can't be deferred to the next available meeting. Um, the other thing with uh, late items is that they do need to be in advance of the agenda actually being published and out to the public because there's no uh, opportunity to get papers written and um, publicly notified available for the public to have in advance of the meeting with enough time to actually consider what's on the agenda. Um, uh, the Agendas are generally set at the beginning of the month, so each month um, the chief executive has a meeting uh, with myself and with the other exec team members. We take items that were brought through from previous meetings and then anything else that's come up in the meantime. We set a draft agenda that goes out to circulation and is confirmed at least two weeks prior to the meeting. The papers all have to be written and approved um, by the Thursday prior to the meeting happening <coughs> so that they get to the members and then to the public in time to meet the legislative requirements in the standing orders again. Um, notices of motion, I will be that if um, a member wants to bring them a notice of motion to a meeting, uh, the standing orders are number 3.10 and that um, just states that the notice of motion must be in writing signed by the mover and stating the meeting that they propose to have it at has to be at least five clear working days before the meeting that they want to address. Um, and that again, the, the chairperson can direct the chief executive to reviews, uh, refuse a notice of motion for specific reasons only, um, and then they may also refer it to a different meeting. Um, in the past, there has been an example where um, the chairman referred it to a committee because the committee would normally deal with that type of business and then make a recommendation to council. So that may be another alternative for um, the way that a notice of motion would be dealt with. Um, normal. Um, and usual practice is that if somebody wants something on an agenda, approach the chief executive or the chairman in the first instance and just have a chat about where it might fall in the work program for council because it may be something that's already coming up or it may be something that um, needs reprioritizing. Um, that pretty much covers it, I think, Thank you. unless you have any questions. Uh, Councillor Barker. Uh, I, I see that you've outlined for us in some detail <clears throat> the procedures of normal circumstances, but how, if there was a matter that was urgent, uh, would we be prevented from having a meeting uh, simply because of those procedures? Surely there must be a process uh, for getting around that? If so, what is it? Yes, through you, Mr Chairman, there are standing orders around calling extraordinary meetings of council um, and also if there is a major item that comes up that can be dealt with um, under the standing orders as well. The, 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 the specific reasons why it has to be accepted and has to be considered prior to the next available meeting, but yes, it is totally possible. 
in a, pre in a previous <coughs> life, we had a thing called, process called leave, where the, the standing orders could be a, amended to suit the circumstances by leave, which was by the agreement of everybody. And I would have thought uh, some circumstances where uh, everybody would agree to something being done in less than five days. And on this particular uh, subject here of a meeting with uh, Nadi Kahununu, I would have thought uh, it would have been a very reasonable assumption that had the chair asked us, I certainly would have uh, said yes, let's meet, and waived the five-day rule. Uh, the question I have is why was that not done? <coughs> Through you, Mr Chairman, I can answer that. I've never received a request in writing for um, the uh, Ngāti Kahanuni Iwi Incorporated to attend this meeting, so the process hasn't be, uh, been able to be instigated. The question <laughs> then I have is, uh, why would we have to wait for Ngāti Kahanunu Iwi Incorporated to ask for the meeting? It was an issue that we had with them as much as they had with us. Why did we not invite them <coughs> to this meeting today to speak to them, issue the invitation. Through you again, Mr Chairman, we have uh, issued an invitation to meet with them. We did, however, note that this particular meeting, for which the agenda was already prepared, uh, was a full day, uh, and, uh, and perhaps a, 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 an extremely full day, given the uh, presentations that are going to be occurring later on in the day. And uh, looking at it, didn't feel that there was any opportunity um, to be able to um, to accommodate uh, to accommodate uh, a meeting, um, but we have, as the chairman has pointed out, uh, been in discussion with them about alternative meeting times and days. Mr. Chairman, there is a provision in standing orders for uh, leave, if you call it that, uh, in, in our terminology, to set aside standing orders, but it requires a, a resolution at. Uh, the particular meeting, and, and I can't remember, it, it requires a significant majority to, to actually achieve the objective of setting aside temporarily standing orders. If, if I could just add, I think this, this matter is, um, is ongoing, and, and I believe when we meet with Ngāti Kahanunu Iwi Incorporated, their board to our council, it'll be the first of many meetings, and that, that's the way relationships grow and that's why I was reluctant to rush into a meeting uh, with them today, uh, put aside the, the volume of work for the day um, because I think it's too important to, to rush into discussions when um, we actually are looking to build, build relationships. So I, I tend to disagree with your estimation there, Councillor Barker. Well, Coun Councillor Belfort. Well, we're now discussing the, the, the process as, as distinct from the substance of the issue and, and I guess the, the question that's being raised is uh, in, in a fast moving situation, here's a case where the matter hit the fan so to speak on Friday after materials for the uh, board were received and so forth uh, and there doesn't appear to be uh, any mechanism uh, that would allow this group to come to a meeting today, leave aside whether Nadi Kananunu is present or not, uh, for the matter to actually be substantively discussed uh, uh, today. Uh, the, what is the state of play? Uh, what's, you know, now, some of it is teasing out in the course of what, having what is, in theory, a, a process discussion as to how we get it on the table. Uh, but. Uh, it, it, it seemed to me over the weekend that there, there was no prospect of how the current state of play with that particular group, uh, uh, how we could be updated, how we could discuss what was going on, what was the proper course of action and so forth. There was any, any way uh, apparent under the rules that you could have a discussion like that. And I think that's a shortcoming. Uh, uh, of the rules and, and hopefully when we craft our own version which we're supposed to be doing shortly I would hope we could attend to that. Councillor Barker. I don't mind being called Councillor Barker. It's just a chair. That's a, that's a, um, that's a compliment. 
Um, I agree with the two previous speakers and um, um, everyone's aware that I'm hugely disappointed we weren't able to get a meeting. Um, uh, Kahanunu uh, asked for a meeting uh, publicly. Um, Councillor um, Belford requested a meeting in writing and I did as well and um, it didn't happen. We have um, offended these people. Um, it, on our own volition, we're saying that um, uh, if we have a holiday or a cup of tea, whatever you want to call it, uh, the dam is at risk. We had a chance to get these people back on track and we didn't take it. And I, it's extraordinary. 